and to give us the ultimate deliverance, the second coming. Breathe on us this morning, Lord. In the preaching, we'll ask you to strengthen and stir. We probably don't even know what our need is, Lord. Truth be known, none of us probably know what we actually need. But you can dig down in there, Lord, and open our hearts and do a work that maybe we don't even know that needs to be done. We ask you for it in Jesus' name. And all the Lord's people said. Amen. The Lord put on my heart here in the life of Abraham this morning. The Lord put it on my heart. I'm, I'm going to dwell. and It may take me all day to preach it. We'll be back here tonight. Chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Well, that's what I'd like to give you today. He'll be enough. He'll be enough. I don't ever have a title prepared. You title your own sermon after I'm done. Whatever he said to you. But the Lord put that in my heart. Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord will let us I want to dwell around these scriptures today let the Lord let us look at it and God will speak to our hearts I don't know how many is here pastor I'm not good at estimating the numbers I, I, 100, 200 I don't know let's say 150 just I may be way off. But if there's 150 people here, the Lord's fixing to preach 150 different messages. I'm the only one that'll know what I said. I'll go this afternoon and think all afternoon about it. I'll think about what I wished I would have said. I usually think about a couple of things I wished I hadn't said. <laughs> Every preacher understands. But I'll be the only one thinking about that. You'll be dwelling on what he said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Woo! So all you need is the Lord to speak. The word of the Lord is enough. Yeah. Right. You won't need anything else. It bring, the word of the Lord brings life and dispels death. Yes. Yeah. It brings light and dispels darkness. Yes. Yeah. It brings love and dispels despair. Right, right. It's all you need is the Lord to speak. Yes. He spoke and there was light. Right. Yeah. I love how sometimes the Bible alliterates itself. Yeah. And God said, let there be light. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I love over there in Ezekiel. He said, that chapter 16, I passed by thee and saw that thy time was the time of love. Yeah. You were not salted. You were not swaddled, cast out in the field. He said, but when I saw you, I said unto thee, live. <laughs> Y'all better help me. I'll throw these nice flowers at you. <laughs> Woo! I'm a five-generation Baptist preacher on both sides of the family I will throw these flyers at you <laughs> we got over being nice about three generations ago <laughs> yeah Lord don't be impressed with that family tree there's moonshiners on every other branch <laughs> and, then, and then we got like one or two branches where the preacher was the moonshiner <laughs> and that's a true story <laughs> <laughs> they seemed a little happier than the rest of us. 
<laughs> but it didn't turn out well. One of y'all drank out of one of these glasses. I'm just going to trust it. That, uh, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Now, it's all you need is the Lord to speak. There's enough power in the Word of God. It'll save you. It'll strengthen you. There's enough power when the Lord speaks. Winds go calm and waves sit down. When the Lord speaks, you get answers or you get an answer that says you don't even need an answer. You got me. Give you something better than an answer. He'll give you an anchor. Bless the Lord. So I want to dwell around these scriptures. Mm. The Lord has come along and spoke to him right after a war. First mention of war is in chapter 14, verse 2. First mention of war in your Bible. These made war. There were five kings met four other kings. There was a great, there was a great war in the east. The kings of the east gathered for war. Boy, howdy! What do y'all think's happening in this hour? Yeah. We're right back to Genesis 14. Yeah. Y'all ain't helping me. Yeah. The kings of the east are gathering up for a great war. Mm. I thought communist China was in China, but turns out it's in Congress. <laughs> it's in the Supreme Court. It's in the judges of the land. Everything God ever judged, he either sent it to the east or it came from the east. Cain headed that way. Nimrod's over there building his tower. Mm. Everything that the, everything God ever judged, either sent it there or it came from there. And now here's Abram, first mention of war. You got a little second coming going on in chapter 14. Look in 14, 14. And when Abram heard... His brother was taken captive. He armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, pursued them unto Dan. And he commenced to whipping all the kings of the east. Now, there's a whole lot of second coming right in there. Tribe of Dan is where most of the old preachers and your pastor knows. They'll tell, they'll tell you they believe that's where the Antichrist was coming from. What are we doing? The first mention of Hebrew. Where is it at? Down in verse, up in, oh, up in verse 13. Abram the Hebrew. And he had some confederates with him. And these were confederate with Abram. And what are we doing with the war with the kings of the east over there with the Antichrist? I got news for y'all. The Lord was getting ready for the second coming way back in the book of Genesis. Y'all ain't helping me. It's been a plan the whole time. I'm liking my Bible numbers. 14, 14. Y'all ain't helping me. Maybe I ought to clue you in if you hadn't got to study biblical numerology, if you hadn't never looked in 14 and 14. 14 is a special number, Pastor. It's a little unique. 14 is the number of mass deliverance. Mm -hmm. yeah. About every time you see the number 14, God is moving his people as a group over to another. <laughs> There's a mass deliverance always taking place. Mm. Mm. 14th day they came out of Egypt across the Red Sea y'all ain't helping me God didn't settle with 12 tribes he let Joseph's two boys get in on it got under that cross under that covenant and the patriarch and Ephraim and Manasseh turned it into 14 tribes 
Paul was the 14th apostle. Mm, God wasn't ready to take that thing from the Jew to the Gentile till we got that 14th apostle. And he wrote 14 epistles, including Hebrews. Mm. That fortnight, and we're not going to run that trail no further, but every time you got number 14, God's delivering. <laughs> I'm about to shout. He said, always feel this good in here. It did last time I was here. Ah. Mm. And here you got the Hebrews whipping the kings of the east over there where the Antichrist is from. Do you not smell the second coming right in the middle of all this? Y'all understand something fixing to happen in this hour? Sure. Sure. We ain't living in the middle of politics. We're in the middle of prophetics. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All of the modern day politics is your old time prophecy. Yeah. All these kings, all these beasts, all these creatures rising out of the sea and the seven horns and ten claws and the little horn and every bit of that. You're looking at it these days. Right, right, right. You're staring at every bit of it in the face every day. Yes, I got news for everybody. I'm going to make a little Bible announcement, see if you appreciate it. Jesus is fixing to come back. Yes. The Lord's coming. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. If you've got that depression that everybody's talking about, the kind that they're all talking about, it's probably because you're watching Hollywood movies, listening to country music, talking to gossipers instead of prayer warriors, and hanging out with your carnal habits. I need a little help. I need a little help right there. If you got that depression, you plugged in on CNN, now you can't even watch Fox News. Can't even go to Cracker Barrel now, Jack Daniels Whiskey. I mean, I'm still going, but I ain't drinking. <laughs> Try to sit near somebody. Sm I ain't allowed to smoke, but if I can find somebody with a pipe, I sit close to them. <laughs> I didn't mean to partake in other men's sins. This is where I was seated. What about all the sons taking over? That's 30 minutes of preaching. Them two sons took over Fox News and turned it into CNN. The two sons inherited Cracker Barrel and started serving Jack Daniels. The sons of our churches have taken over and turned it into a contemporary rock music concert. I'm glad the kids wasn't swaying a while ago. I'm glad that was old timey singing they were doing a while ago. Leave me alone. I don't have any Sunday morning sermons. I lost that briefcase. It fell out like 40 years ago. Oh, Lord. So I was just trying to tell you, he come out of a warfare. In verse 17 of chapter 14, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him. Now he's fixing to deal with two kings. King of Sodom come out to meet him. But in the next verse, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> another king showed up. Yeah, and Melchizedek, king of Salem. Y'all ain't helping me. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Y'all been having church long enough. I don't not have to set the cue up for you. Y'all don't know when to start shouting. Yeah. Yeah. If I had a good soul choir, they get the tambourines and the floppy hats going and ain't even to the main point yet. Yeah. Last time I preached in a black church, the organ player, he crescendoed and finished me out and I wasn't even out of my introduction. <laughs> it's a true story. I just kind of had to close. He was done and took me on down. I just uh, went on down with him. I, okay, well, I guess y'all will get part two some other time. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Interesting right here. I'm talking about spiritual warfare. Abram just came out of a great war and then two kings come and they were warring over him. They both of them wanted him. <laughs> both of them wanted him. 
The king of Sodom came after him, but if you look at it, the king of Salem beat him to the punch. Yeah, he yeah. got there first. Mm. Yeah. Said he got that was a happy bubble. Yeah. You got to get them off of you to blow your gizzard on top yeah. of your liver. The king of Salem got there first. Yeah. Yeah. Bless the Lord. What about Satan came after you, but yeah. the Lord saw it. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. he, and, he, and the Lord got there first. Yeah. And what did he bring him? Somebody tell me on this front row. What did he bring him? Bread and wine. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord, Melchizedek, brought him bread and wine. Just put the Lord's Supper right on out there. Yeah, right. Mm, he got in that bread and wine before King of Sodom made his pitch. Verse 18, he was the priest of the Most High God. Verse 19, and he blessed him. Amen. Woo! Verse 20, Abraham gave him tithes of all. And in verse 21, the king of Sodom got there, but he got there a little too late. Got there a little too late. King of Sodom headed out to meet him. King of Salem got there, done got in the bread and the wine, done got in the tithe. Abraham done started tithing by the time he got there. All of you that sat on the Lord's money this morning, you're not going to enjoy that. <laughs> Any God robbers in the house, raise your hand. I don't want to sit on a bench with you this week. <laughs> I ain't going to trust you. I'd be trying to swipe stuff out my little Bible case over there. Mm. And he gave him tithes. Oh, Lord. When the king of Sodom showed up in verse 21, what did he say? Give me. Give me the persons. And then what did he say? Take the goods of thyself. Give me and take for yourself. You know how Satan's going to get half of you? He knows what he wants from you. He wants the people in your life. And he'll, and he'll snook you in by promising you what you want for yourself. Are y'all with me? He said, let me tell you what I want. Let me tell you what you can have. Oh, he threw a pitch out there. Do you not see the temptation in the wilderness happening right here? Satan showed up in the wilderness and I tell you what he wanted. Matthew 4, there's Christ in the wilderness. You know what Satan wanted? He wanted us. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Good. And he tried to pitch to the Lord. Now, why don't you take for yourself? Make bread and make yourself satisfied. Cast thyself suddenly into the temple. Go ahead and prove who you are. Uh, uh, here's the kingdoms of the world. I'm going to tell you all this. If Jesus would have took care of himself and been snared by Satan, me and you wouldn't even be here right now. Right. This whole thing would have been done. <laughs> but he loved us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you why Jesus went on to the cross and it wasn't primarily because he loved me and you. It's because he loved his father. He loved his father. That love he had for his father is what sent him. That love that he had for his father is what kept him. That love that he had for his father is what kept him on track. That's why he went to the cross. You and I, the church, we was a reward from the cross. Since you've obeyed me, here's what you get. Hallelujah. The king of Salem, the king of Sodom. Now, circle this. Circle this. We'll be here all day. Circle this. The end of verse 20, circle the word tithes. Come down to the end of verse 23. And uh, Abraham, in verse 22 and verse 23, Abraham, and Abram said to the king of Sodom, 
I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet. Let's stop and thank God that the father of the faith back here did the same thing that the son of God did over there. He told the devil no. And that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram, and circle this next word, rich. I don't need your riches. That's what he said. And then come on down. He said, I tell you what I am going to do. We're going to take care of these young men that have been with me. And the very end of verse 24, let them take their, and circle that, portion. Hmm. What about that? Tithes. Rich. Portion. <laughs> mm, we'll be here all day. I got news for you. If you'll give the Lord his tithe, if you'll tell the devil, you keep your riches. And then don't you worry about God's going to take care of the portion. Yeah, right, right, sir. Good. Yeah. Gallon of milk, sis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gallon of milk, sister. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. If you'll do the right thing with God's tithes, with Satan riches, and they'll take care of your portion, yeah. you get something down here and go down there in 15 1 and circle that word reward. Hurry before I run. <laughs> Hurry, I'm about to leave the study and enter into the heavenlies. <laughs> Woo! Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield. That's the first half of chapter 14. How could one fellow with just 318 servants whoop nine different kings, deal with all of them? Tell you how he had a shield. I'm about yeah. yeah. to eat the offering plate. <laughs> Whew, I didn't throw the flyers at everybody. Now I got to eat the offering plate. Oh, bless the Lord. That shield, that's for the first half of 14. As it say, Pastor, and thy exceeding great reward. That's the second half. Right. Yeah. Abraham fought the right fight in chapter 14. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Abraham cho chose the right king yeah. in chapter 14. Yeah. And the Lord showed up and said, this is going to work good. Yeah. 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 You fought my fight, I'll be your shield. Yeah. You yeah. chose my priest and my king, I'll be your reward. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. I'm wanting to put a point on chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, and chapter 17. I wrote a little thought above each one of them sitting over there, our Sunday school man. What a great job on Romans 10. Me and you need to go to Waffle House and stay up to about one. <laughs> You buy the chili. I'll share my thoughts. And I want to borrow yours and preach them at the next revival. And never give you credit. Just say the Lord was speaking to me at Waffle House. Huh? I, I wrote them down over there. Before the day's done, we'll try to put one tag on every chapter but I just need to ask you a question this morning and so he got down what's verse 2 make sure it's the right one I, yep it's the right one studied this pastor a few years ago have not studied it since haven't looked at it hadn't gone over any notes just <laughs> just in the night the Lord said that's where we're going had even looked at no notes. Didn't need no notes. Got scripture in front of me. Right. <laughs> you don't need my notes. You need the word of the Lord. Right. Hey. Amen. Abraham said, see, he wasn't Abraham yet. Mm -hmm. 
That's chapter 17. Fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Five, as y'all old timers know, is the number of grace. He took Sarai and made her Sarah. He took Abraham, and thank God he gave that Jew some pork, put a ham right in the middle of it. <laughs> Abraham. Yeah. He breathed grace on them. Yeah. Amen. Fifth letter, Amen. Hebrew F, the I'd like to hear your thoughts on that fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. <laughs> Sorry about that. <sighs> you know what Sarai means? And you see her in chapter 16, she gets in trouble. Sarah does what every other Old Testament woman did in the book of Genesis. She got to where she wasn't trusting God or her husband and took over. I need a little help. I'm not going to tell you who I'm voting for Tuesday that I already voted for last Friday. And I live in Georgia. I'm going to vote 500 times all week long. <laughs> Next week, all, and I have a white van dark windows. I got 750,000 ballots. I've already filled them out in there. I'll be pulling up about 2 a.m. Taking it to Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Arizona. I'm in Georgia. The only thing you can get in trouble for is talking about it. You can do it, but you can't talk about it. Yeah, you can commit fraud. You just can't talk about people that commit fraud. They lock you up. Anyway, leave me alone! Why don't you let me get off on that? Sarah. She took over. When Eve took over the garden, didn't go good. When Sarah took over the covenant promise, didn't go good. When Isaac's wife took over and got Jacob and Esau and cooked a goat and sent Esau out and lied to the daddy. She what? None of them women were trusting God and they all took over and they all made a mess. Oh, that's where I got off. I'm not going to tell you who I'm voting for, but it will not be the female. <laughs> you don't have a wife, you say amen as loud as you want to. <laughs> you don't have a wife either, do you? So say amen, son. I'll leave you alone. Now, you know what Sarai means? One who manipulates. But when the family got right with God after Hagar and Ishmael and the whole thing, when the family got right with God and Abram got right with God, got everybody right with God, the Lord came along and breathed grace in them. Amen. You know what Sarah means? Sarah. <laughs> A princess. Yeah. It's in every woman to fear because God never gave the woman control. And when you don't have control and you just have to trust us, <laughs> if I was a woman, I'd took over 19 different things. Look at who you got to trust us and trust God. And you got to trust God with us. Mm. 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 Tough being a woman. Yeah. you got to trust. Amen. I'm trying to close, Pastor. You know what a man does when he backslides? Mm. When a man gets away from God, mm. he ducks down and takes off. Mm. Mm. Because God called him to be the head. That's what he wants to get away from. He ducks down and takes off. You know what a woman does when she gets out of sort and out of will of God? She rises up and takes over. It's funny. The both of them want what the other one has and, and both of them want what the other one don't have. The man just don't. I don't want to be responsible. I don't want to be in charge. I don't want to be the head. 
He'll duck down and take off. Where was Adam when Satan came in the garden? Everybody wants to be the other thing. I pastored in Florida several years. You know what everybody down there, we just want to get away and go to the mountains. Just forever. We got to go up to the mountains. All right, I'd go up in the mountains and preach. You know what everybody in North Carolina was doing? We're going to go down to Florida. We won't get any sunshine. And we, we, we got to get away and go to the beach. We got to get away and go to the beach. After a few years, I told all of them, please trade houses. <laughs> just trade houses. What's wrong with us? Never content with what God gave us. Never trust him. You ladies know how hard it is for us men to trust God. We have to answer for all this and make it work. It's hard to trust God. How hard it is for you to trust God and trust your husband and trust the pastor. That's hard. Sarai rose up and took over and she made a mess and they're fighting today. Their bomb's going off this week because one woman took over. But oh, when they got their home right, God come in there and said, <laughs> he breathed grace all over them. And said, that will make you a princess. And I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Amen. So I'll leave you with this this morning. Chapter 15, verse 2. What did he ask? Lord God, what wilt thou give me? What wilt thou give me? Seeing I go childless. Can I say it like this? He gave God tithes. He turned he refused the riches. Just like Moses choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to take him riches of Egypt. Amen. And he said, Let's make sure and take care of everybody's portion now, these that have labored. And then the Lord showed up and said, uh, Good choices, son. You gave me your tithes. You turned down the devil's riches. You made sure that those you're responsible for got their portion. You, you didn't think of yourself. You thought of others. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm your reward. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then Abram said, after all of that, well, what, what can I have? Mm. What wilt thou give me? because <laughs> see the king of Sodom had done come in there and said give me he said no yeah. you'll never get to a place with God where you can say Lord what are you going to give me if you took the give me yeah. of the devil good. Mm. Good. Amen. Good Amen. Matthew 4 Jesus told the devil no yep. Matthew 26 in the garden he told the father yes yes yeah. Amen. to that cup yes. I heard Amen. Buster Seaton before he left us and he said saying yes to God is much harder than saying no to Satan wow. yeah. it's hard to say no to Satan when he's bribing you with all that but then later on the father will come by and offer you a cup it's going to kill you yes but if you'll say no to Satan and yes to God there's a chapter coming where the Lord said now time for your reward and then it just came out I don't think it was premeditated brother pastor it was so sincere he just said what what will you give me because you didn't give me one thing I wanted Mm. it was just in the moment you made all the right choices. You've done the right things. I'm going to be your reward. Okay, well, there's that one thing you didn't give me. What are you going to give me? Mm. And I've already closed my Bible. But I'll tell you what God told him. He said, come out here and let's meet. You want to see what I'm going to give you? Yeah. We're going to ha- I'm about to run down them double doors. You- God said, we're going to have to count the stars yeah. for you to begin to comprehend. Yeah. Yeah. 
Glory. What I have in mind yeah. for you, we're going to have to count stars. Whoever plays the piano, I want you to come. <laughs> That's what I'm going to leave you with this morning. Some of you quit entertaining the king of Sodom. You're sitting there in the wilderness and considering all three options. Tell him no. Yeah. He's a liar and a hound. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you are sitting on the things you're supposed to give God. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking more than money. Right. Amen. What are you sitting on you're supposed to give God? <laughs> Amen. Some of you think only of yourself instead of those that are counting on you and make sure they have their portion. Mm. You're just making sure you got your portion. Yeah. Mm. Abraham said, I only want a portion, but let's take care of these three boys. Yeah. Boy, if you'll make them cross them three hurdles, yeah. you will come to a point where the Lord is standing there and you can say, what are you going to, what, what would thou give me? Mm. Well, what would you like? Yeah. Okay, let's go count stars because what I have in mind bigger than anything you ever thought. (laughs) You want to come around and pray? You want to come around and pray? Some of you need to say, Lord, because some of you are in the right spot. You come through all the hurdles. (laughs) Come down here and let him show you some stars. (laughs) It's okay to ask. It's okay to ask in chapter 15 when you said the right things in chapter 14. Stand up, make it easy to come. Come on and do business. Come on and do business. <laughs> Woo! You can ask him for big things when you've said the right things. You deal with 14, he'll deal with 15. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.